They're fantastic images, very nice. I couldn't understand what you what you said, but I could understand what you were showing. It was really fantastic. So things change. 1952-2012. Do you see the difference? Yes, you see. And that's also a difference in endoscopy. There's a big difference from 1952 to today. But there is still also a difference that happens every day, every year. So if we want to be doctors, of today, we have to learn, we have to change, and that's why you're here. Grandiose changes, not only happened, but they happen every day, every month, every month. So, if we want to be doctors of today, today, we have to learn. That's why we're here. So, if we want to be doctors of today, today, we have to learn. That's why we're here. So, if we want to be doctors of today, today, we have to learn. That's why we're here. Этот парень, Феттель, родился в нашей клинике, где я сейчас работаю. Он живет там. We come to this later. А мы потом, мы потом об этом поподробнее расскажем. So, imagine, when you come home and you bring your wife a flower, and the flower looks like this, she would not like it. Если вы подарите своей... Women like flowers like this. Если по возвращении домой подарит ее своей жене, вот цветы, цветок, который слева, вряд ли ей понравится. And the same in endoscopy. И то же самое в эндоскопии. So, let's look at endoscopy. This is a fantastic image. So, probably because we have different bills, this is 50 euro. In Germany we use. And if you want to find out if it's... Um, uh, uh, if it's really real or if it's wrong, you have to go, you'd have to take your endoscope and just look for the detail. If you go for this area, this you cannot see with your eyes. So, we предлагаем сравнить всех, кто проверяет достоверность купюр с современными эндоскопами. You need magnification, and uh, the easiest way to check is taking an endoscope. And this is the endoscope of the 160 series, yeah? which is a, it's a very good resolution. But most people did not use the resolution. If you compare this to Pentax, it's better. It's a better image. You see more. You can see the letters. <coughs> this is Pentax, recent. This absolutely, this is what you can get now. Very good quality. Последний вариант эндоскопов Pentax очень хорошего качества. Последний их разработка. And now we have the same image with the Olympus endoscope. There's only one difference. The difference is eight years. Olympus had this quality eight years before. Разница в восемь лет. У Олимпуса такое качество, которое было продемонстрировано на Пентаксе, уже было 8 лет назад. So, if you go to the same distance, you have the same quality of image. Yeah? Same distance, Pentax, Olympus. Same quality. So, Endoscopy, high resolution endoscopy, it's all about this coin. But you're not using this coin like this. You're using the coin like this. Like if you insert it somehow. This is your distance of maximum resolution. Yeah, то расстояние, с которого можно получить максимальное разрешение при использовании современной видеосистемы. Because if you have three coins, that is Pentax or Fuji. If you have one coin, it's only possible with Olympus. The 
This means that the endoscope is able to give you an image at one coil. But who of you is able to keep the distance of one coil? There's the heartbeat, peristalsis, nervous nurses, no sedation, this is the secret of high resolution. What is the source of secret? Because if you go near to one coin, this is what you get. And it's much more. And please, this is what you get since 10 years. It's not today. This is 10 years old. I was working in 2006 at this resolution every day. Today, we're not looking for the letters, we're looking for the quality of the letters. This is what we can see today. Сегодня мы уже смотрим не на сами буквы и цифры, а уже на качество отдельной буквы и цифры. Вот это современный уровень эндоскопии. But if you don't go for this distance, you can buy a cheap endoscope. Но если вы не способны удерживать фокусное расстояние толщиной монетку, проще купить. <laughs> it was his coin. <laughs> so, near focus. Let's look at an endoscopic video. So, how does it look like? Who can see Z line? Z line. Who? Everyone. Well, I have problems seeing Z line in this case. Откровенно говоря, я в этом случае не очень хорошо вижу. So we need to switch. So what do you think? Возьмите в руки, пожалуйста, устройство для голосования. Would you like yeah. to uh, walk? walk, to walk? Yeah. Ah, пожалуйста. Ah, uh, yeah, push, the, push the button. You, you were dreaming about tests. Yeah. What was it, no? Yeah, this is our test. The record. What's the choice you want Пожалуйста, коллеги, все голосуйте, отвечая на вопрос, удовлетворить ли это вашему мнению изображение, или это изображение требует улучшения, чтобы разобраться в эндоскопической анатомии и оценить слизистую. Да. Сколько? Все проголосовали? 24, но я так понимаю, из 27, если вы не голосовали. А у меня нет. Не даже. Где? You should have Fuji endoscopes. 
Если у вас, если у вас вы работаете на изображении такого уровня, то проще не тратить деньги, а купить что-нибудь более, чтобы, например, аппарат в And the easiest way for stabilization is just introduce a biopsy forceps, five or ten centimeters, just deep in the stomach, for stabilization. You will take the biopsy anyway, so it is free, no cost. But if you take a distance cap, Yeah, I also have a distance cap for shaving, for, you know, this super male view. Yeah. The distance cap makes it much easier. But the distance cap has one very big disadvantage. It is ridiculously expensive. Yeah. Please, let us tell the industry 50 cents. How many rubles? 50 cents. Uh, 30 uh, euro cents. Yeah. 35 rubles. Okay. Approximately. Maximum price for a cap. То есть обращаемся. Then I will take it for every industry. По 35 рублей. Yeah. Which is? Тогда бы мы использовали для каждого эндоскопического исследования, чтобы стабилизировать положение эндоскопа. And if it is used for every endoscopy, it's a large, much bigger market. Better visit. But to, to stay, to, to keep the image, you need to stabilize. So, this is a cap. There are different sizes of caps, very useful. At least you should use it in high suspicion cases or patients with a family history who are very high risk. If you seriously, then the patient with a complication of family anatomy or the patient with a high risk of the presence of a new education, I recommend to use the cost of the treatment for obtaining a better result. So, if this is a very nice cap, it is a very nice technology with the optical zoom you can have a different angle of view it's not it was not sold it was only a very small series experiment I was working with this for many years something that really works well and it is still available on the Japanese market with the Lucera system And the quality of resolution is fantastic. So that is one advantage doctors in Japan have. This is the 160 series what I showed you what I showed you before, which is not available. And if you look here, you can see movement in here. There are some small white dots moving. And then are single white blood cells. So during normal endoscopy, it is possible to see blood flow by the white blood cells in here with the 160. But if you use the Japanese system, which is available now, you cannot see because of the frame rate. Resolution is enough, but you cannot see. And this means that the best endoscopists in the world from Japan, they don't have moving image. They only have still images. And that is the reason why you see a lot of frozen pictures. And when you see videos from high resolution, they always stop. Stop, stop, stop. And the processor has a very intelligent and excellent freeze mode. But endoscopy is not frozen images. Endoscopy is moving images. 
And the big advantage of the European system, the 100 series, is that you have moving images. We know from other parts of the medicine, particularly from, an, from ultrasound. Ultrasound gets better if you look at moving images. If you look at the still images, it's not so good. And everybody of you who performs endoscopy is doing movies. You move all the time. You look at the... And sometimes you're frustrated because you cannot catch the frozen image of what you see in the movie. The Japanese approach is just different. The Japanese don't look at moving images because they don't have. The system does not allow good flow. Too many artifacts. They run and freeze. Please, move and enjoy the movie. <coughs> we have it. This is from 2006, 10 years old. And if you look here, it's not the same resolution, but you can see the white blood cells move in the vessels. So 10 years ago, we were already able with the European system. And today, this is our resolution, normal to Udino. And you can see the movement everywhere. This is not special prototype. This is our routine endoscope we use for every normal routine gastroscopy. And I'm able to show you why blood cell flow in every single patient of every normal gastroscopy. So this is what the endoscope can do. Now we're back to you. Of course, the most important tool is your eyes and your brain. But you start using your eyes and your brain when your endoscope works. And when you work at the distance of one coin, then your endoscopy system is at the optimum. But if you start using your brain and your eyes before, it means that you do compensation for something of insufficient technology. And I think the doctor should have the best tool and then he should have the best performance by using brain and eyes and probably your heart. Коллеги, я не хочу прерывать да, очень яркое выступление Умра, поэтому если вы чувствуете, что какой-то фрагмент не уловили, вы просто я вижу зал, просто покажите, и я эту часть буду переводить. А если я вижу, что все воспринимается хорошо, я не буду мешать, потому что ну, интересно, лучше будем слушать побольше. I just uh, explained that uh, if everything is clear, I mean, from, from the language point of view, uh, it's okay because better to listen to you than to my translation. But if some ideas are properly not clear, yeah. I ask the audience just to show me and I will yeah. at least sure. explain the situation. Direct protest. <laughs> Good. This is interactive. So, this is just for the basic technology. You want to see the coin again? No, you don't. So, let's go into medicine. You have seen already from Sergei some excellent pictures from the esophagus. Hard to be better. Really impossible. Okay, this is a, a case of normal esophagus. So maybe we can have two screens again. So what do we see? This is a very good image here. And you can even see some vessels here. But if you look with NBI, it's not optimal in your image. This is just every day. Speed endoscopy, fast image. If you look with NBI, 
you directly see IPCL pattern. There are many doctors who don't like IPCL because it's you know it's inconvenient, so many details, so much work, frustrating for the eyes and but I like to see details. And the endoscope shows you. And the endoscope shows you even when you don't want to see it. And that is the reason why many doctors in Germany prefer to use old and bad endoscopes. Interesting подход, что некоторые доктора, когда система показывает то, что нам не знакомо, в частности внутри приятные петли, да, которые рассказывал Сережа, которую похвалил Улыб. Когда это новое, которое эндоскоп так и так показывает, потом надо интерпретировать, он говорит, поэтому в Германии много довольно докторов предпочитают работать на эндоскопах старых моделей, так сказать, где все просто розовое или неперевированное, недостаточно, без деталей. So, another solution is not to use NBI. Ну, а другой вариант не включать это. Because if you use NBI, you see this, it could be too much. Or you can plug it to the monitor in a wrong way, then the resolution is less. Also many people do. But please, don't do. You have excellent instrument, and we have to use. No, I would be happy if we use it. But this is how it looks, with a cap. With a cap, it's easy to keep near distance. And the movement you have gives you some extra information. You can see the different color of the deeper vessel and the superficial vessel. This is what you have on the logo of this meeting. It's very easy to see. And you can see it over long distance. In less than five minutes you can have a high resolution overview over the stomach. And now we are going to near mode. And you can see the vascular structure of the IPCL pattern, easily, no effort, if you have a good endoscope. <laughs> okay. And the cap presses out, if you, there's too much tension, the capillaries are empty. If you take tension away, you can, on, you can not only check IPCL pattern, you can check the speed of revascularization. It's not a declared pattern yet, but you can already do. <coughs> Unspecific abdominal pain. Just normal gastroscopy. What do we see? Ah, we don't know. Probably we see something here, we see something here. And if we put NBI, it gets very clear. Here could be something. Here you know what it is. Now it's easy. And it's time saving, it's faster. And if you go near, we can see the superficial pen. That is just approximately the patient. Harmless. And here it looks strange because. It's blue light endoscopy. And the blue light reflux ulcers look very strange. So, now we have to put on the voting. So please, decide. Is it normal? Is it metaplasia? Is it inflammation? Or is it malignant? Yeah. Push a button. What is push button in, in Russian? Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Probably when I stay for a week, I, I get some training. No, before. I would prefer, I would tell you, short away. Okay. Jmi. 
Shmi, okay. Shmi. <laughs> Sometimes they, they don't know, then they don't press the button. Okay, let's see results. Yeah. Okay. Number two and number four. Metaplasia or malignant. Okay. <laughs> so if you don't know what you do, you do biopsy. Yeah. If you're too careful, you just take too many biopsies. This is not a problem for a doctor. This is a problem for the administration. <laughs> But in this case, it's very typical for not being malignant because it's not irregular. Just typical case of malignant. And again, no, no. So, if you sorry. take a biopsy, what? too many. Just a moment, question. Нет малигнизации понятно, а что есть по NBI? Нерегулярно. Нет, ну то, что он сказал, я имею в виду, чем отличается? Там нету каких-то капиллярных? Нет регулярности. Регулярности. Да. So, this is a very nice case. This is a young man, completely asymptomatic, and he had only one problem. The brother died, and he was very sad, and he was afraid that he might have the same from family history. So we performed gastroscopy and we saw this. In the cases of family history, I usually do Lugol staining. And there was some area not stained by Lugol here. And this is the image of NBI. So what do you think? How does it look? We have seen the benign lesion and we have an asymptomatic patient for routine endoscopy. And we have a good endoscope. Again, Xera 2 technology from 2006, 10 years old. Do we have a result? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. The majority thinks is malignant. And I absolutely agree. So why? Because Lugol is very typical for malignancy. And this is very typical for malignancy. Unfortunately, I don't have a movie with an old endoscope of this lesion. But I have a similar case shown many doctors of Europe and the United States and Japan and there was no doctor from Europe or United States able to see the carcinoma but every single Japanese doctor recognized so at the higher resolution we can also see if you have the old endoscope you need to be Japanese <coughs> with this endoscope everybody can do вы поняли, да, что с современными аппаратами, независимо от того, где ты вырос и учился, японец, западноевропеец, американец, увидишь такой рак. Но, к сожалению, старыми вариантами эндоскопа только японские коллеги могли бы увидеть такой ранний рак. Вряд ли западноевропейский или американец. So, let's, let's look at the details of this case. In this case, an area that was normal was looking like this. And an area that was pathologic was looking like this. And again, this is not today's technology. This is 10 years old. If you have Xera 2, this is quality you have. But we can see something. What we see, we see IPCM. You have seen this before? 
I think there was perfect slides from, from Sergei, you, you cannot see better. You cannot remember. Japanese love these tables. For the rest of the world it's difficult. Because you just don't remember. But you know, when it's getting irregular, it's not good. And how much irregular, doesn't matter at the moment. But when we look at one of the original publications, you see that the infiltration depth can be recognized by the endoscopic image. These were the printed images in endoscopy. 2002, 14 years ago. They are compared to today's standard. They are not really sharp. But they are enough for doing medicine. Now compare this of our case to the publication of 2002. What do you think is the infiltration depth? It is at least submucosa, which means no way of endoscopic treatment. You have to do surgery or radiation therapy. And you can see it on the initial endoscopy with an endoscope that is 10 years old. Before taking the first biopsy. So, how does it look? Awful. Malignant. Let's look at the case. No cap. NBI. There's something in the front. Yeah. And that is not okay. So we have a larger cancer below, but we have some visible lesions above. And in these lesions, we also have adenocarcinoma. In general, the surgeons resect more than the tumor, because nobody saw these lesions before. In the new endoscopes, you can see. You can also see small lesions that are also adenocarcinoma in the stomach. So if you look at these cases more carefully, not only at the primary tumor, usually endoscopies, you go to the main target, you take the main biopsy, you put the patient probably in tumor, tumor conference, and then there is done radical surgery. And the pathologist tells you, there was some extra focus in the stomach. Now you can say before, there is something extra. Not much difference because the safety margin is done by the uh, surgeons anyway. So what is the advantage? The advantage is the most important what you can imagine. Because you talk to the patient before. And if you explain to the patient that there is a tumor at the junction and they need to have an extended esophageal gastrectomy, large surgery, Usually patients are not happy, but if you can show them lesions above and below, it's easy for them to accept. And the acceptance before treatment, like surgery, is absolutely crucial about the psychology of the patient. How they can accept the treatment and the fate. It's the same if you have the national soccer team going into a game with a high motivation and self-confidence or with little motivation and self-confidence. I tell you, my patients have to be at least as trained as the National Joint Soccer Team. Probably it's the same for your patients. And this helps me sometimes. Oh, may I ask you, how do you call this type of lesions? We use the words something like uh, uh, both implantation metathesis or something like a seeding 
of tumor. Yeah. How do what what's your uh, definition or term term which you use to explain? Do you want the scientific or the everyday? Everyday. Okay. Slam. Slam time. Slam. Yeah. So and scientific as well. In general, in, the, in my department, we have different kind of tumor. One tumor is called operoma. Opt Operoma. Operoma. This is a tumor that needs operation. <laughs> let, let me first explain the question. I asked how they call it. They are because we have different variants. From Sevi, I know Ron often uses the word. Sergey Sergeyevich, I believe, used the term in his lecture implantation metastasis. So I asked how they call it. Operoma. Sorry for it. And then the, the next one is called biosoma. <laughs> it's something that needs biopsy. Yeah? And then we have the don't know OMA. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you usually ask a colleague, please have a look. Um, you cannot know before. There's a, a lot of uh, false positives where you think it could be something. And the easiest way is just to have an impression and probably ask a friend. But uh, in most cases you can take a biopsy, with the one exception. Please don't biopsy a varix. <laughs> you should recognize varix. This is awful if it beats them. <laughs> okay. We should have a coffee break, shouldn't we? But yeah. we could have discussion before. Are there uh, questions? Неплохо бы попить кофейку, если больно переводить. Но сначала давайте вопросы и обсудим перед тем, как попить кофе, которые возникли в процессе вот этой части. Есть? Нет? Все понятно? Если брать биопсию, то сколько кусочков? Well, if you find the biopsioma, how many pieces? Pieces would you prefer to take? This is a very good question. You know, my, 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 my former chief, my endoscopy teacher, when we were asking him how many bi biopsies do we have to take, he always said, you have to take one. But it has to be the exact representative location. If you take the biopsy not from the best place, it doesn't help if you have t take 10 wrong biopsies. So, but in general, um, the problem is, we will see it later, if you take a biopsy, there will be bleeding. And if there is bleeding, you don't see anything. So, you better take only one biopsy in your mind from the, from the start, and then take another two or three. But they are blind, usually. Понятно, да, что чуть дальше он коснется отдельно этого вопроса, а его шеф, который учил его эндоскопию, говорил, лучше взять один биоптат конкретно из того места, которое представляет наиболее выраженные изменения в этом образовании, чем 10 откуда угодно. You can do an easy experiment about to find out what is the best approach for yourself. And the way is to take the first biopsy separately, put it in a separate container, and the additional biopsies in another container. And do it maybe for 10 or for 20 cases, nobody will realize it. It's not so expensive. Uh, nobody will realize and then you just compare. And if you recognize that you never find something in the additional biopsies, you know that your view is good. Понятно, да? То есть никому не говоря, 10, 15, 20 пациентов, возьмите биопсию отдельно, первый кусочек, баночку, и 2-3 кусочка в другую баночку. И потом сравните свои собственные результаты. Если э, они совпадают, это значит, что вы точно попадаете с первого раза в десятку, и не надо щипать эту опухоль несчастью много много раз. Если нет, ну, тогда. But show the results nobody, only for yourself. Но никому не показывайте результаты, используйте их только для себя. Да.
Коллеги, еще, еще раз. Громче, чтобы все слышали. This is a very good question. I should use the cap in every patient, but they are too expensive. In gastroscopy, we uh, use the cap in, in unclear cases or in high-risk patient uh, cases. This is positive family history or a high suspicion for something, then I use a cap. And in colonoscopy, I use it in every case. No colonoscopy without cap. And only two millimeter distance cap. I have seen uh, pictures of the six millimeter cap. Four. Or four millimeter cap. Four millimeters is more than a coin. Four millimeters means that you don't use the maximum resolution of the endoscope. Or you have to suck, at least. Whatever you do. Yeah. But uh, I think we should use a cap that gives us the maximum performance of the endoscope. But, you know, if you have a fantastic car and it's, you never drive it, it's maybe okay. Uh, thank you for a bright presentation. Uh, I have a question about taking biopsies. I always take biopsies or if uh, you will treat this patient endoscopi uh, endoscopically later, uh, you, you may have a problem with submucosal fibrosis. Yeah, I agree. The, the, best, the best biopsy is always a full specimen. So, ESD complete is a good biopsy. But it's sometimes difficult to explain to the patient. So, in general, um, if you know exactly what is your next step, you don't need a biopsy. You do it anyway. So if you know that the patient will undergo surgery because it's a clear operoma, you have to consider if the standard biopsy, what we do at the moment, makes sense. Everybody does it, but I personally believe it's wrong. We, have, we began the discussion of discard and, uh, and, and uh, resect and discard. Um, and probably it is the wrong side where we are approaching. The clear, the, the clear tumor, which has a clear approach, may be the best to, to discard or not to take the biopsy at all. But on the other hand, we have new markers like KRAS or whatever, where that can be stained and that may have influence for new adjuvant. Uh, approaches. But depending on your hospital and on your surgeon, some of them always do surgery. And if they do always do the surgery, no biopsy. But what about, for example, if you are not sure for, let's say, for 100% whether it's carcinoma or lymphoma? With then you take biopsy. Of course. Yeah. If you are, un if you are un not sure for 100%, always biopsy. No, ocean, uh, and if there's fibrosis, it's just a small spot. Uh, for, uh, I do agree it in colon, no biopsy, just for septic Yeah, but what about in stomach? Because uh, we have a standard indication for EMA and ESD. It, uh, it includes um, uh, well differentiated adenocarcinoma. So it's a poor differentiated or uh, signet rare. Carcinoma, so we should not perform endoscopic treatment. Why not biopsy in stomach? No. Um, in general, uh, the, the indication for biopsy in the stomach is usually in all cases because you are, it's very rare that you know for 100% what you see. In esophagus or in duodenum or in the colon, you can be sure from the, from the image what is the next step. In the stomach, you usually don't know. I, I also have a, about a two-hour training for stomach that shows you that you understand nothing, that you know nothing, and whatever you decide is wrong. So in the stomach, I tend to take more biopsies. But if the patient is 90 years old, 
if the patient will not receive treatment, if it's only best supportive care, and there's no other consequence, when it even doesn't matter if it's lymphoma or, or carcinoma, then I don't take a biopsy. But in, in nearly everybody in the stomach, biopsy. Exact varies. No varices biopsy. And sometimes varies look strange. Это такое большое, для начала большой дискуссии, если коротко подвести то, что задавали вопросы и как отвечал э, наш уважаемый гость, то надо так сформулировать, что в пищеводе, в 12-перстной кишке и в толстой кишке все больше и больше нарастает тенденция к тому, что определяться с тактикой дальнейшей по результатам, по сути дела, визуального осмотра современного, и принимать решения, удалять эндоскопически или оперировать, или лечить, так сказать, консервативно. Более того, в толстой кишке вообще рассматривается подход, который сейчас активно дискутируется, я о нем увы упомянул, так называемая политика reject and discard, то есть удалил и оставил, и не извлекаешь для морфологии. Но это отдельная тема. А вот уточняющий вопрос, все-таки в желудке так часто мы сами не можем понять, и Ува говорит, у меня двухчасовая есть по этому теме э, тренинг, где я пытаюсь доказать, что мы ничего не понимаем иногда, ничего не знаем, и вот там для желудка как раз э, необходимость дифференциальной диагностики между низкодифференцированными фо формами рака, высокодифференцированными, иногда э, надо отличить лимфому от э, рака желудка, которая внешне похожа, а принципы лечения принципиально разные, да, в желудке мы чаще берем биопсию, но еще раз, вот его э, настрой на то, что если это клинически не меняет, то есть есть такой подход, задай себе вопрос, что поменяется в зависимости от двух разных ответов, полученных тобой в результате любого диагностического исследования. Если ответ один и тот же, то зачем тогда его делать? Ну вот приблизительно э, ответ э, был таком, что последний пример, что 90-летний пациент, который в любом случае не будет оперирован, не будет проводиться какая-то инвазивная терапия, зачем тогда как бы загружать э, лабораторию патоморфологов лишними биопсиями? And uh, a little question. If uh, you are not taking biopsy, are you uh, include to the protocol of endoscopic investigation uh, and the photos to prove that uh, lesion you find is real or yeah. not? Or it's only text? I used to do. I, was, uh, I, I had a scientific approach uh, to endoscopy for 16 years. And now I have a practical approach in a smaller hospital for 8 years. So if I'm absolutely sure, I tell the patient. And sometimes the patient don't trust me. But I don't think that's so often. But you keep photo or video yeah, sure, presentation always. in your uh, I have a, computer, I have, right? I have the connection at the room. When mm -hmm. I go, when I step on a pedal, then I get, uh, uh, I, I, I can save uh, a high definition video of the lesion. And at least we keep images in high def and NBI. And there's some lesion we can check out. The good news is that it's uh, the best documentation system I know. And the good news is that your Olympus endobase will get this system as backbone. Mm -hmm. So that means the next release will be at the highest standard of what I know. Um, I'm very happy about it. Maybe we will ask later the representatives of the company to explain us a little bit about the new I don't know if they, if they know yet, but I know I was talking to the engineers and what is going to come is fantastic. They should know. Yeah, they yeah. should know. But probably, when they are the engineers. Ответ, надеюсь, понятен, да, что сначала был ответ, что нет, я не фотографии не представляю пациентам, я их просто пусть верят мне на слово, и я 16 лет занимался, работал в крупной клинике и для научных целей все это делал, а теперь я 8 лет работаю в относительно небольшой больнице и на регулярной основе эти фотографии не размещаю. Но понятно было, что за этим стоит то, что стоит, и на вопрос, а что вы 
не сохраняете? Он говорит, не только сохраняю, но и каждого пациента в высоком разрешении, если все-таки потом э, какие-то возникают юридические или медицинские или вопросы, все это хранится в компьютерах, и хорошая новость, что Олимпос должен скоро э, представить э, новую систему архивации наших изображений, электронной истории болезни. Но вот, надеюсь, что что Yes. Let's, let's get a little philosophical, because your question is somehow philosophical. If a patient comes to me, yeah, he comes and he searches for help to keep his health or to become healthy again. And I do examination of the abdomen by palpation. It's exactly the same. Whatever I do with the patient, this interaction is always the same. So the patient comes and trusts and I do something what I, do, what I know for, for the best and then I decide probably in this case we will wait and see or we will perform computer, computer tomography or endoscopy. It's, so we are always acting as doctors but when you have to decide about a biopsy or not biopsy then we think that a protocol is better than the basic decision you do every day, all the time, as a doctor. And I don't think that you should stop being doctor when you perform endoscopy. You should, you should just continue. You should have the same mind, the same approach, and the patient should have the same relation. And when you tell the patient, you know, I did something not because I believe, I did because of protocol, ah, usually not good. Вы знаете программу разрушителей легенд. Я вас предупреждал, что Увы, он разрушитель протоколов и номенклатур. Поэтому вот, э, вот сейчас, видите, к философской стороны, что когда мы, приходит к нам пациент, мы начинаем беседы, мы пальпацию проводим, аскультацию. Мы же не следуем протоколу строгому. Да? Вот нас научили, мы принимаем на основании этого решения. Поэтому говорит, я до конца не люблю идею, что если мы принимаем решение о необходимости взятия биопсии, мы скорее должны следовать протоколу, утвержденному, чем тому решению, которое мы принимаем на основании совокупности как бы, сведений, которые мы знаем о пациенте. Ну что, кофе? Кофе.